Welcome to Bella in Your Business. My name is Bella Vasta, and today I've got a, a guest that I actually met on Twitter as we were sitting next to each other at a conference. How funny is that, you guys? Meet Chris Bryant. He is a incredible uh, creative director at Empire Studios. He has a video production company, which is Empire Studios. He's also the founder and lead instructor for Studio 12 Academy. When he's not running those, he's a filmmaker and currently in production on a, a military documentary. Uh, Chris has been a wealth of information for me, and I wanted him to be on the podcast today to be a wealth of information to you. So welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. Um, you are coming to us from Rome today, I hear, which I, I really appreciate you taking some time away from your vacation to be here for all of us. I think that says a lot about you and I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It's, it's more of like a, a workcation. <laughs> yeah, I just going somewhere different and I'm, you know, doing my post-production here and doing invoices and following the clients. Um, but yeah, you know, just when I finish my work at the end of the work day, I you know, stroll around and walk around. I'm about four blocks from the Coliseum. Oh. Um, I mean, it's Airbnb. You got to love it. Airbnb is amazing. I'm actually yeah. staying in one this weekend. Um, we're having what we call the seven Queenies retreat. And there's about six other social media powerhouse women who are coming and we're just like doing it up this weekend. So awesome. yeah, Airbnb is, is awesome. awesome. Um, so give our listeners a little bit of a background to you. How did you become who you are today? Like in terms of your career and film and what drew you to it and how did you create this whole like living doing it? Sure. Uh, it started with opening night, uh, 1993 Jurassic Park opened and I was just blown away by the power of the moving image and, you know, telling stories through movies, things like that. And I just want to be doing that myself. And, you know, every time I did a book report, it was on Steven Spielberg or on, you know, animatronics or whatever, and just kind of grew into that. I went to college for it as well, Western Connecticut State University. Um, and it just kind of started getting bigger and bigger. And it was like a, a thing I did on the side, uh, you know, like an unpaid kind of a part-time gig. And then it kind of got bigger and bigger um, until it got to the point where I was exponentially growing every year. It was like double at least the business that it was the previous year. And I just had to give my nine to five, my two weeks notice. And, you know, I've been doing this full time three, four years now. Uh -huh. um, I've been doing, I've, I threw my first company in 2005 uh, and it just keep, kept growing from there. So, um, but yeah, and, and doing this, I mean, I can make my own schedules, make my own hours and um, pick my own clients. Uh, <laughs> there's been times where it's like, there's, you know, kind of different things going on at the same time. So uh, I choose the projects that I care most about yeah. um, that I really want to work on and, that allowed me the flexibility to do things like, you know, coming to you live from Rome, um, where I, I shot a bunch of stuff right before I got here. And my wife and I have been here for a month now, uh, traveling Europe and things like that. So Incredible. I think that's just inspiring on its own as a small business owner, like designing the life that you want to live, you know, yeah. because our listeners are uh, either doing just that or they're wanting to get there, you know? And I think a, a lot of the time wanting to get there, it comes down to marketing and selling ourselves, right? And Big we nice. live in such a visual world this, these days that at that impact live concert, concert <laughs> convention we were at or conference we were at a big um common theme that you heard that we heard there and a lot of other places is that we are all media companies that happen to be in this case dog walking or pet sitters right so can you Absolutely. tell me a little bit more about why business owners and entrepreneurs would need video in their life and what kind of video because there's a lot of different kinds okay Great question, and it, it's monumentally important. I mean, nowadays, more and more people are consuming video all the time. I mean, you've got this, you're glued to it, um, and you know, it's so easy to shoot video. A lot of people are shooting video. A lot of people are shooting the wrong kind of video, um, but the, the cost of entry is down to nothing. I mean, everybody has a cell phone now, yeah. um, and distribution is free with YouTube and Vimeo and Facebook Live and IGTV. Um, there's no reason not to do it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, you've got pet sitters and pet walkers, and why would they need video? I'm, I'm a pet owner. I love my dogs to death. What kind um, of dogs do you have? I know our audience wants to know. I have a Bichon. She's like, you know, this 15-pound uh, lap dog. Yeah. And uh, she's, her name is Fluffy. My wife named her, I promise. <laughs> and uh, Stevie, Stevie, uh -huh. uh, he's like a terrier mix. We're not really sure what he is. We, we um, rescued him from a shelter. Um, but they're both, you know, bundles of joy and we love them uh, tremendously. 
Yeah. Um, but grandma's watching them now while we are uh, globe trotting at the moment. That was our next um, question. <laughs> yes. But um, no, so if, if she's not there, if she's traveling, if she's busy for work doing something and we need to hire somebody, I mean, I want to have a connection with that person. I want to know them personally. You're going to be with my pets. You're going to be in my house. Um, you know, we're not there. Um, video, if, if people don't know you, going from just a recommendation, which, which is great, but if there's not a recommendation, um, having video builds up that trust level and that credibility immediately, like instantaneously. As what soon is as it you, about video like, that does that, you think, Chris? It, you know, it's one thing about like reading, like let's say there's a testimonial. Let's say you're the best pet sitter in your area and somebody wrote a little paragraph saying how great you are and they read that on your website. That's, that's okay. Yeah. But if there's a video and you're seeing the person and you're seeing the energy and, and their personality, I mean, you can tell really quickly when you meet someone if – you know, you, you, you jive with them or not. If you see like just through text or maybe like a, a, a you know, a nice profile photo with some text, um, that helps, but it really, nothing matches video. You've got the visual, you've got the audio, you've got the energy. Um, I think if this was, I know that some listeners are going to be literally, literally just listening, uh, for people on YouTube that are seeing it. Um, they're hopefully seeing my energy and seeing how excited I am with it too. Um, but even with a voice, you're hearing the tone of my voice and my inflections and and how excited I am and my passion for it, um, that the written word just can't get through or an email or whatever. Um, so video, I mean, as soon as you see that smiling face and they're talking about how much they love their dogs and they want to take care of yours as well. Um, and yeah, here's, here's, I mean, you know, maybe one of the dogs jumps on your lap and you know, it, it really creates that connection going, you know, I like this person already. I, I would trust them to be in my house when I'm not there with my dogs. No question. And yeah. people come to that conclusion very quickly in video, you know, facilitates that. Yeah. And, um, so because it is so accessible, like you were talking about, um, and there's, there's no, you know, cost to distribution. You could just post that puppy anywhere, pun intended. Um, what about those people that say, Oh my gosh, I have to be perfect. I have to, I have to look perfect. I have to have makeup on. I have to say the right thing. I would say that there's perfection and imperfection. What do you think, Chris? Absolutely. I mean, first off, done is better than per done and good is better than perfect. And you're not going to get it out. It's almost um, also, not even relatable when it's too perfect, right? Exactly. That's exactly right. I mean, if you're too perfect, it's like, is this person real? Or like, you know, maybe you're just like reading off a, like a memorized script. Yeah. When you're genuinely yourself, first off, the video is easier to shoot. You come across more natural and the person who's watching it feels more of a connection. Uh -huh. If you try to memorize like a two paragraph thing about, you know, your statistics and like how many dogs you've helped and like you're memorizing it and you're just reciting lines and you're not an actor. Um, it's going to come across disingenuous, um, no matter how good you, you're trying to do it, how many times you rehearse. Then meanwhile, you hate the process because you have to memorize all those things. And then you watch the video back and go, that's not me. So you want to be yourself, um, you know, have a couple bullet points. Um, if you're going to be doing like a live video on, on uh, you know, Facebook live, or you just want to do like a quick, Hey, I've got five minutes to shoot this quick video. Um, I want to get it off to um, a perspective, you know, client for dog walking mm -hmm. and say, Hey, Hey John, um, you know, so-and-so recommended me just wanted to, to introduce myself real quick. I know you're, you're interviewing other people. Um, but just wanted to, you know, introduce yourself. So, you know, it puts a face to the name. Yeah. Um, I'm so-and-so and here's my background real quick. Uh, you know, hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day. Let me tell you something. Do you know how much it's going to help you? If you shoot that one quick 30 second, 45 second thing. It doesn't even matter uh, what you say. You could sing the ABCs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people see your, your energy, your love for yeah. dogs, and it just creates that connection. It doesn't take you any time. It's free. You do it on your phone and then just upload it, email it, whatever you want to do. Um, if you're going to upload it to some service, um, I recommend putting it on YouTube as unlisted and then just sharing the link with the person. Um, and yeah, I, I love mean, that. I challenge you guys yourself. right now to the next person that you get an email. That's like oh, all these questions about you. I challenge you to whip out your phone and do exactly what Chris just said. Do a oh. selfie video answering all their questions, upload it unlisted to YouTube send them the link and say, you know what? Your questions were so important to me that I wanted to like, like, express them to you in this manner. So when you get a moment, watch this one minute video, like make it one minute, not like five minutes long, <laughs> yeah. but just one minute. Now, Chris, I'm wondering, uh, let's step it up a notch. So I remember like when I was just getting started with video, you know, my iPhone was amazing. 
But then I was like, you know what? I want to be like the big dogs. I'm going to get a DSLR camera. I have got like what is almost like a cemetery of equipment because it doesn't get caught. <laughs> And the only piece of equipment that I actually really use, even I was just speaking in Hershey, and I know you do a lot of speaking too, um, setting up my tripod with my iPhone on it and a wireless mic. Can you talk to us about, we're talking about seeing people. Can you talk to me about the audio portion of it and why it's so important? It is so critical. Yeah. I mean, your phone, depending on the situation, it, it's passable. There are times where you might want to look into doing different things where, uh, I mean, you can have wireless mics on your cell phone now you can have wired mics if you're worried about interference or setting up extra things or whatever syncing it um, and, and there's little, little shotgun mics you can put on your phone too it's like 50 60 bucks yeah. from companies like road and and uh, things like that and really great options but audio is so important um I, Even i've said before it before we did this one you asked me you said is the echo bad in this room and you just got out your simple little earbuds that come with your phone and those are great when you have your phone in your hand but if you wanted to really record something with your phone static that you're not attached to that's where the wireless mic is good and you can get them for under a hundred dollars on amazon i can even put a link in here too but it's um it's it's uh, i heard people fall in love with you through audio actually not video have you heard that or experienced that yeah, I mean, it, when, when you're speaking too, like if you have a video, if this video, if you upload this thing in standard definition, but the audio is perfect, people will watch this video as long as they're interested. Please keep watching. Uh, and then, but if you shot it in like 4K, you use this crazy camera, but you know, the audio is all garbled and you can't really hear me. Yeah, do it. Watch that. They don't want to, you know, they'll, they'll forgive less than perfect visual. let's let's do this really quick let's do this really yeah. quick take off your earbuds real quick unless it's going to mess up my podcast guy and I yep oh see can you hear me at all you can hear me yeah your your audio dropped off completely but your viewers that are listening it's terrible right now <laughs> And that was yeah, the first time we've ever done that in Bella in your business. <laughs> and my, my producer is now going, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you're watching the YouTube analytics just drop off. <laughs> oh, Chris, I love having you here. Um, so you guys, Chris is a really awesome, awesome person. I had just recently hired a videographer and uh, because I, I feel like we need to understand that we need that person on our team, just like we need a dog walker or a bookkeeper or an office manager. It will severely help your company. And I want to just kind of break it down. People are like, Oh my God, Bella, I don't have that money. That's too much money. Guys, you can literally take the video on your phone if you wanted to, and then find someone to edit it for you. Okay. Or you could have them come set up a whole shoot and do it and, and, and all that extra stuff. And that's going to be more expensive. Chris, can you explain to us the different levels of having a video, like, you know, working with someone and, and how it can be super cheap or it could be very expensive and very involved? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it really runs the gamut from if you're like outside of you filming yourself and then you editing it and doing all that. As soon as you bring somebody else in the mix, if you're hiring somebody uh, like a freelancer, um, that could, I mean, I get this all the time too, where somebody says, Hey, I shot this video or I'm going to shoot the video and I want you to edit it. Then of course I give them tips on how to shoot it. Um, okay. Well, where's the platform? If, if it's vertical or horizontal, um, the audio, the lighting. So that way, when I get the footage, it's easier for me to give them something they're going to be happy with versus if they shot it on like a, a potato and it's just terrible quality. And I can't really do a whole lot with that. I yeah. can work magic, but not that, not that much. Um, but having just someone like, like you said, you film it and then somebody else edits it and they really can cut it and, and get it nice and pretty and, you know, sweeten the audio and put graphics and overlays. Um, that could run, you know, depending on where you live. If you're in the New York City area, it'll be more expensive than if you're uh, in the middle of nowhere, Maine, for example. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, maybe $100, $200 for, for something that's, that's fairly basic, especially if it's somebody who is still cutting their teeth for video. Uh, maybe they're still in college. Uh, maybe they just graduated college and need something for their portfolio. Uh, I love newbies who are really good yeah. looking to build their portfolio. It's a great time yeah. to get those people. Young and hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, that, that's like on the very low end. Find those through Craigslist. Um, there's a lot of Facebook groups that you can join for free uh, for videographers and things like that and put out, you know, 
uh, little things in. Hey guys, paid gig, put that first so people actually pay attention. And then yeah. describe it very briefly and say, here's my budget, contact me. And it's important to put the budget because people, if you don't put the budget, you're gonna get all kinds of people talking to you, including people that you can't afford and now you're wasting your time going through their stuff and you're wasting their time. So say, here's the budget, contact me if you're interested. You will get responses if you're giving something that's at least half decent as far as pay. Um, and then you might find people that you might like to work with and then you work with them you know, ongoing. Um, and if the video is giving you a return on investment, uh, you can kind of step up that game and uh, you know, keep going and, and produce more video. Now, the next step is having somebody shoot it and edit it, or maybe even just shoot it and then you edit it. But the shooting is typically pretty expensive, um, if, depending on what you're looking at, because you may have to bring their gear. Um, there's travel expense, depending on where they're coming from. Um, and, you know, of course, their own gear depreciation is a whole uh, slew of billing type things I'm thinking of in my, off the top of my head here. But as soon as you talk about a crew coming in, even if it's just one person, obviously you've exponentially increased how much it costs. Um, but that said, you're also exponentially increasing the production value and how professional it looks. Um, and of course you can have it, you know, have a big crew if you're talking thousands of dollars, but I mean, I have my own video production company. I'm shooting myself in the foot by saying this, but it's totally true for every 10, 15 videos that you do yourself personally, you only need maybe one video professionally done. If that yeah. you can probably get away with even less. You only really need a polished video when it's like a really high level, here's what we're about, uh, and you really want to wow um, a crowd of people. It's never really just for one person. Mm -hmm. um, but the vast majority of content, you can shoot on your own. Mm -hmm. But you should know when you need to hire a professional or pull in some pros, even if it's just for one video. And then that's when the, the crew comes in and the lights and the audio and the boom mics and you know, all my fun toys I have. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes it really, really polished. Um, and it, it's, it's an expense, but really it's an investment in yeah. you and your business. And once that video is up and it's looking awesome and you're really proud of it, that is like a representative of your small business that is talking about you 24, seven, 365, whenever people are searching online for that, uh, you know, for your and services. people will take you even more seriously. I mean, in our industry, we're selling yep. trust and peace of mind and we're an outsource of guilt and love. So when people go to your website and they're wondering if they can trust you and they see like a professional video, you guys, these are the videos you can do. Who you are, how you operate, why or where and what services you do. So what area you service, how you complete the service and what services you actually do. And, and make it so that you at least have an editor that makes it entertaining. So music, some B-roll, it's not just a talking head. Maybe you've got some, some words flashing on the screen or some really cool stuff. And guys, B-roll is when your face goes away and it, like, it describes what's going on. So you might see a picture of a person walking down the street with a dog. Um, this stuff can, it's not even like a constant expense that you like have to have. It's what Chris was saying, you know, for every... 10 videos or even more, you only really need one professional one. And, and if they all have that same theme, and so I'm going through your website and I can expect to see a one to two or three minute professional video that's entertaining me and delighting me and making me smile on almost every page of your website, like, wow, you just knocked it out of the park. So Chris, I want to trans, um, uh, I could keep you on here for hours because there's so many things we could talk about, but I want to talk about the mistakes, Chris. What are the biggest mistakes that you see uh, people making in creating videos? Okay, one of the big ones, and this goes down to even when you're filming on your phone, it's a habit a lot of people have, and I've been looking into the lens, so I'm not sure if you've been doing it, Bella. Me too, yeah. But it's, it's looking into the lens when you're speaking to the viewer and not looking at your own face. Right now I'm looking at Bella, I'm yeah. not looking at the lens, and it's a little bit of a disconnection. Uh -huh. But right now, for me, speaking to a little dot on my laptop, it feels a little bit off, yeah. but I know on the other side of that lens are hundreds and thousands of people that I'm speaking to and I'm making direct eye contact with. As mm -hmm. soon as my eyes drift down to either me or to Bella, to, yeah. to, and a lot of people do that, like if they're, I have a, hang on. Okay, this is a, a mirrorless camera, but it's a kind that goes up like this, so uh -huh. you can see yourself. But uh -huh. so many vloggers who you'd think knows what they're doing, are not looking at the lens, they're looking at themselves. Yeah, And that yeah. throws you off. It's like, I feel like I'm not really having a conversation with this person yeah. because if we're sitting across from someone in a cafe, 
yeah. but they are like constantly looking at your chin or they're looking over, over your shoulder. It doesn't have that one-to-one -one connection that yeah. you should have sitting in a cafe or you should have on a video. Yeah. So do your best to look at the lens. Um, and if you're not used to doing video, most people are not used to doing video that other people are going to be seeing like this. Maybe it's just stuff for their friends. Uh, practice. Yeah. Shoot a video saying, okay, no one's ever going to see this but, but me. I'm going to do this for my practice and you just do it. You talk to the lens and you get better at it. And your, your first video that you ever do like that is probably not going to be very good. But your second video will be better. And your fifth video will be much better. And your tenth video, you'll be like, oh my God, that first video was embarrassing. Uh -huh. um, so practice makes perfect, um, definitely with being on camera as well. Um, and don't worry about being perfect. Worry about being yourself. Yeah. As soon as you try being someone else, like let's say you see a video that somebody else did, maybe another dog walker uh, yeah. or a pet sitter did some video and you're like, man, I want to be like them. And you try to emulate them. You're no longer yourself mm -hmm. and you're selling it's not something. Authentic. It's not authentic. It comes across and then it's draining for you because you're trying to be that other person that you feel is perfect. You're, I, I'm getting Mr. Rogers on you, but you're perfect the way you are. Be yourself. Um, and it, it's, it's all going to fall into place. So, don't worry about being perfect. Worry about being yourself and, and you know, that's huge. And again, about another mistake is um, the audio is very, very important. The lighting is very important. Yeah. And this was a little bit more advanced, but filming for the platform you're going to be on. So for example, if you're going to shoot on I, for IGTV and you know that your video is only going to be on your IGTV channel, make sure it's vertical. Mm -hmm. Don't shoot horizontal. People are not used to doing that. They always hold the phone like this. It's yeah. like impossible. For some reason, nobody wants to do this. Yeah. Um, and IGTV, of course, is designed for vertical only. Yeah. Um, if you're going to be shooting for anything aside from that, like YouTube, um, make sure it is horizontal. Um, Facebook Live, of course, is vertical. Um, but know where your video is going to end up and film with that in mind. And tripod it up whenever you can. Um, you can get a tripod for your, for your phone for like 25 bucks. Yep. Uh, they're great. They'll hold on to your phone. Even I, I've got a, I've got an iPhone seven plus and I've got like a big outer box case. So it's chunky. Yep. Um, but the standard smartphone cases, uh, sm standard smartphone tripods will hug that no problem. And it, it's, it helps when you can't prop it up against something. It gets you just the angle that you want. Spend 25 bucks on a, a half decent cell phone tripod and you will not be disappointed. I love that. Those are all such great tips. And I know people are taking notes right now. We also are taking notes for you and they will be in the show notes on the website. Uh, Chris, as we round this up, I would love for you to just kind of leave us with a couple of great online resources that you know, and love and trust regarding video. Uh, really with video. I mean, it, there is so much stuff online, um, both paid and free. It's like, you know, YouTube university, right? Um, <laughs> if you're not sure like the best upload settings, you can go on to YouTube. Um, actually I have a YouTube channel. If you're editing on, Do on Adobe Premiere, I have a YouTube channel that, uh, goes through the basics all the way through more advanced things. So how can we find it? Um, you know, it should have a, a decent URL. Uh, <laughs> Chris, Chris, <laughs> Bryant, Adobe Chris Bryant, Premiere. we'll put it in the show notes too, but yeah, that'll help. Okay. Um, yeah, Chris Bryant, Adobe Premiere uh, tutorials, uh, that, that'll pop up there. Um, okay. And if you have any questions on that, of course, I'm happy to help with those as well. Um, but other resources, Studio 12 Academy, uh, like you mentioned, that's um, an online training academy that I've started that's specifically designed towards uh, video creation, video marketing. The course I have out now is more about starting a video production business, not really uh, up anyone's alley here, um, but there is one that's coming out this November um, that is eight steps to creating amazing video on a tiny budget. Everything from shooting on a cell phone to shooting on a DSLR, mirrorless. Should I buy a camcorder? What do I get? That's coming out um, in November. Actually, for your listeners only, Bella, uh, if they go to studio12academy.com slash Bella, uh, there is 50% off if they pre-register. And the first 50 students to sign up are automatically entered to win a 40-inch carbon fiber camera slider with a motor unit. It's like a $500 value. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds amazing. Oh, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> you know, those like classic shots for like the, the camera's there. And they really smooth. Ooh. It, uh, uh, it's fancy. I want it. <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm limiting it to 50, the first 50 students. So that way people have a really good odds to, you know, to get it. 
Yeah. Um, but again, that's studio12academy.com slash Bella uh, to learn more about the course and to, uh, to enter for that. Um, and you know, really anything you could find between studio 12 Academy or YouTube, just going on a Google, I mean, Google owns YouTube. So if you go to Google, you type in something, how to do whatever. Um, I mean, I, I've learned how to do so much through YouTube. I'm always learning both professionally for video, yeah. I'm always watching things on how to tweak and how to do what I do better and faster, more efficient all the way to, you know, I, I installed new windows in my house and I did that through watching YouTube. Yeah. Um, so there's almost nothing you can't find. And I believe most libraries in the United States, double check with your local library, but if you have a library card, uh, you automatically have a free subscription to lynda.com, which is huge. Um, I've got a New York City public library card and that gets me access to lynda.com and all their premium content at no charge. So if you don't have a library card, pick one up and double check to make sure uh, if you have access to those kinds of resources because it's, it's not just video. It's, it's not just photography. It's entrepreneurship and running a business and budgeting yeah. and all those things. So that, that, that's huge. I love it. Chris Bryan, thank you so much for spending your time here with us today, especially all the way from Rome. You guys, if you want to check out Chris, go to studio12academy.com or just go ahead and Google him and find him on, on YouTube. It's Chris B-R-Y-A-N-T. Like Kobe. Okay. There we go. <laughs> like Kobe. And you guys, I love to hear your feedback and I know Chris will too. So wherever you heard about this, go ahead and tag us and, um, and, and, and tell us what your biggest takeaway was. And if you love the podcast and you're not subscribed already, why not go ahead and subscribe and leave us a review if you'd like as well. And remember when life gets you down, always keep jumping.